Got a great question from our buddy James here about respect and feelings of inferiority, especially amongst the people that he's closest to. He goes on to say that I'm the oldest child in my family. And for years I was superior mentally and physically, as comes with age. I'm 18 years old right now, and my next oldest brother, who's about to be 15, is already my height and my weight. And he's starting to challenge me with insults and testing my reaction. So far I've taken it and stayed quiet. But I can't help but to feel threatened though. He's my dad's favorite, and is ultimately going to be bigger than me. On top of this, my dad has always competed with me and beaten me at everything. I can't help but to feel frustrated at the sensation of inferiority. My question to you is this, should I continue to work on becoming the strongest version of myself while ignoring their criticisms and challenges or rise to their challenges and play their game? Very first thing I want to do is uh, extend a bit of sympathy but also congratulations for the spot that you find yourself in. It's a tough spot to have been the oldest and the strongest and the biggest and the smartest and then to have what seems to be a, a threat coming up from behind. You know, your younger brother, who you've always, you've always been able to be superior to, who perhaps he's even looked up to, is now recognizing, ha, I'm getting bigger than you, bro. And he's going to continue challenging you in the way that he is fit to challenge you. He's bigger, right? So that comes with the obvious uh, benefits associated with it. And then you got your father. Now, I'm going to make some assumptions here about the competitions between you and your father and the, where it's coming from. A father's, many fathers have a tendency to feel threatened by their son, particularly their oldest son, depending on many different circumstances that could be presenting themselves. Number one could be that you are and I'm not saying this in a derogatory way, derogatory way, but you may be a mama's boy. Meaning, the mother, now just pay attention and just if this happens to be the case, so be it. The mother might be working to build you up, build up your character, build up your self-esteem in order for you to overcome your father's throne, to take your father's place in some way. Not that he's going to be, you're going to become her husband, but there's a tendency oftentimes for a mother to see the weakness in the man that she's chosen, i.e. your father or husband, and then start investing a bit more into the son. And the father begins to resent this. Now, it's either that or your father just has some serious inferiority complex where now he has to exert himself not only amongst the men in his environment but the one that he should be building up to ultimately surpass him, overtake the throne. My father used to say, I want you to be better than me. See, my father was a balanced man in this particular way. He didn't feel threatened by me. He felt as if he wanted me to grow stronger than he was so that I could expand, continue to grow his legacy through DNA, right? Why would you want a weak son? But you're, you know, I, and I don't know the motives here, but I'm just describing the circumstances you find yourself in. And the very first piece of advice I want to share with you is that you have got to brainwash yourself to succeed in that circumstance. And a part of the reason why I said, you know, I'm kind of happy for you is because these are some good challenges, bro. These are perhaps some of those important challenges for a young man to deal with because it, it has to do with living in this world that is dominated by patriarchy. There's always someone who is out to prove themselves better than you. There's always someone out there to conquer you, to step on your neck, to make their way through you. This is, this is the paradigm and the system we live in called patriarchy. And it's an imbalanced, it's an imbalanced and violent way of living, but it's how we got where we are and you're going to need to make your way in this. And you happen to be in a somewhat safe environment in your home with people who you know, generally know you and like you. But you're gonna go out into the world and you're gonna deal with this. You're gonna deal with a boss that, uh, that ultimately wants to put you down or keep you down or, 
or uh, degrade you in some particular way so that he can maintain his sense of superiority. And you're going to have coworkers. You're going to have guys that are just waiting to take your spot. Boy, I can't wait till I just, I can fuck this guy up in with intelligence, creativity, hard work. I'm ready to beat him. There's always a younger dude ready to beat you. There's always somebody coming up behind ready to take your spot. So you're going to face this. Figure it out now while you're in this circumstance at home. First piece of advice is that the way you're going to overcome this in your home and the way you're going to ultimately be able to carry yourself in life is going to be contingent upon how you think of yourself. And how you think of yourself is more important than the circumstances you find yourself in. What you think of yourself determines how you behave. And how you behave is going to dictate the mirror reflection that the world gives back to you. I hope you understand. So what you're going to need to do on a daily basis, but better off multiple times a day, is to look in the mirror. And this is what you've got to do. You've got to brainwash yourself. And you brainwash yourself by making cognitive, concrete statements that you drive into your implicit memory through very emotional affirmation. So you're gonna look in the mirror and you're gonna look at yourself. You're gonna nod your head. I would invite you to begin breathing a little heavier rocking back and forth like you see me doing right now. This is a position of, of power, readiness. And you're going to say to yourself, I am whole, perfect, strong, and powerful. I am whole, perfect, strong, and powerful. I am whole, perfect, strong, and powerful. I am strong, powerful, whole, perfect. I am perfect. I am whole. I am strong. I am powerful. Now I want you to take very close, pay very close attention to my body language, my face, the way I'm behaving when I'm saying this. I'm rocking, I'm breathing, I'm using my, I'm using facial expressions, and I want you looking in the mirror, and I want you acting as if you are convincing yourself, like you're convincing someone. Someone else even, point that guy in the face, the man in the mirror. I don't know who you are, but you know what I see? I see whole, perfect, strong, and powerful. You go out there and you make it happen because you are whole, perfect, strong, and powerful. Do you see what I'm doing right now? I feel whole, perfect, strong, and powerful because I do this shit. Some people wonder how is it that Elliot comes across as so damn confident all the time? Because I tell myself I'm confident. Do you understand? The movement and the animation associated with the affirmation is very, very, very important because if you understand that there are two forms of memory, and I've spoken about this in other videos, I think I did one on implicit memory on my other channel not too long ago, but you've got mind memory, brain memory. It's called explicit memory. It's recalling memory, remembering shit cognitively, right? You know, you memorize your alphabets. Right? Uh, you know, but you know what? You sing your alphabets when you memorize it, right? That means it becomes implicit because singing is a, it's kind of an activity of the body. Let me think of another one. Your, your, your times tables. You, you memorize your times tables. You memorize your home address. You memorize shit. That's happening up here. But there's another memory called implicit memory. And implicit memory is kind of like when you learn how to ride a bike, right? And then uh, 10 years later, you pick up the bike again and you never had to, you don't have to tell yourself all the things you had to tell yourself in order to learn the bike, learn to ride the bike in the first place, right? You don't have to remember, put your foot on this and do this and do so on and so forth, right? Implicit memory is feelings, it's emotions, it's emotional responses. It's in your body. It's in your autonomic nervous system. It's what causes your heart rate to increase when you are in a... When you, when you see a dangerous circumstance arising. Do you understand? It's, it's the intelligence of your body to do what it does without you having to think about it. But the cool thing is about this part of your brain, what makes a human being so incredible, is that you can train your body to feel certain things. And how you feel 
is going to determine how you behave and how you behave is going to be a perfect reflection of what the world gives you. People give me back confidence. Do you understand? Because I project confidence, because I feel confident, because I condition myself to be confident. And you need to do the same damn thing. You can use whatever affirmation you want, but the one I just gave you is a really goddamn powerful one. I am whole, meaning you have integrity. Wholeness, integrity. I am perfect, meaning that there's nothing that needs to be changed about me. I am perfect the way I am. I am perfect just the way I am, even though I'm not as tall and big as my brother. I am strong. I am powerful. Do you understand? And when you convince yourself in this way, those who challenge you will feel this also. You know, I've often talked about vibes. Vibes, we, we're all vibes, we're all vibrations. We're all particles and vibrations. What do particles do? They vibrate. And depending on how the particles vibrate is going to determine the world around you. I know this sounds like woo woo crazy bullshit, but you gotta understand, try the shit out and then give it whatever language you want. I'm calling it vibes, because you're gonna give off some goddamn strong vibes, dude. You guys feel my vibes through these, these, these videos, through this camera, much less standing next to someone in the same physical location. You gotta make people feel you. And when you feel yourself, and you're vibrating at whatever frequency you happen to be vibrating based on the story you've told yourself, they feel you, right? When you're with a chick, you want to cultivate kind of a, a little bit of a laid back vibe, right? You don't want an aggressive vibe, but when you're amongst these guys that are trying to usurp your power, you want some aggressive vibes, confident vibes, strong, powerful, whole, perfect vibes. That's number one. Number two, bro. I know you've said that you've ignored your brother and you've kind of stepped aside and you started doing your own thing and you're working on becoming the strongest version of yourself and you're, you know, you're staying, you're staying away from him. And, you know, you feel inferior to your dad. Of course, I mean, he's your dad, but, you know, there seems to be some sort of provocation. He's provoking you. I'll liken this onto what, what you might experience if you go to prison. I've never been in prison, but like I would imagine, um, or any anywhere where there is a, a hierarchy being established, where you need to assert yourself, you need to establish yourself within the hierarchy. And your best bet is to first create a a force field of protection around you. And that's not an easy thing to do, uh, because that force field is determined by the amount of respect that you can gain. Now, feeling good about yourself is one thing, sending out vibes is another thing, but action sometimes, oftentimes, all the time, matters big time. So you'll probably have to do this just once with your little brother, just once. I would invite you first to warn him. Warn him this way, let him know that you respect him, you get what you give. Listen dude, I respect you. And I also recognize that you're getting bigger than me. But remember that I'm your older brother and I don't appreciate the way you're behaving right now. And I'm going to ask you to stop. You look him in his face, make sure he understands, and then make sure it's done. And, and if he agrees, okay, cool, I'm done recognizes you don't like it, and you look him in his fucking eyes. You gotta look people in the eyes, man. Make sure he understands. Send out those vibes, those powerful vibes. He might back down and never come again, but that might not be the case. He might come back. There's a good chance he might. Then you have to fight. You gotta scrap. You gotta scrap with him. You gotta just like, one, just pop in the face one day. Tell him, I'm gonna punch you in your fucking face right now. And if he, if he keeps acting goofy and silly, like, ah, oh, fuck you, pop him right in his fucking eye. He's your brother. You're supposed to punch him every once in a while. He's your little brother. And he's got to remember that he has to respect you. Not because you're older, but because you deserve the respect. You don't deserve respect if you don't put your foot down. If you're putting your foot down. 
If he's a little bit bigger and stronger than you, if he happens to be a better fighter than you, you might want to give him a cheap shot. Break his fucking finger. He ain't coming at you again. Go to the hospital when he breaks his, when you break his finger and give him a gift and say, hey, look, man, I did what I had to do, but I warned you. Don't do it again. Right? Bite him. Right? Your father, a little different. Circumstances are a little different, especially if you're still living in his home. I would invite you to just have a talk with him the same way you did first with your brother. Explain to him, look, Dad, I respect you. I'm getting older, and I don't appreciate these challenges. I don't appreciate your, your provocation. And I'm just going to ask that you please, with all due respect, keep offering your respect. With all due respect, I would like you to stop. Man, I tell you, with those two pieces of advice, first, training yourself to be strong, powerful, whole, perfect, through the affirmation I just shared with you. Do it every night before you go to bed, every morning when you wake up, and a few times during the day if you have time. And by putting your foot down and expressing your conviction about the circumstances with your brother and your father, you will, you, you will win this battle that you're supposed to face for your own character strength, and you will have tools that you can carry out with you into the world so that you'll always be able to dominate, to win, to succeed, to be the strongest version of yourself, to cultivate all the character strengths you need, to hold your ground and to move forward in life. Done.